G'day Mick here, today we're going to look at the new Wi-Fi barbecue thermometer from Inkbird. Now I've been using one of their Bluetooth ones, this one here in fact, for about a year and it works great. This is the 4 temperature probe one, it's the uh, 4XS. Now the new one, which is here, is very very similar, looks almost exactly the same from the front. Uh, a little bit fatter and if we look at the uh, differences here, it's got a USB-C charging port on the top, waterproof plug there. It's got the four temperature probe plugs in the bottom and each of those has these little waterproof caps as well which is great. So the whole thing apparently is, is pretty waterproof. Let's turn it on and have a look. Okay so backlit screen there, nice and clear. Uh, I actually unboxed this one yesterday, already charged it up uh, for a few hours so it's fully charged. It didn't come with a charge um, so put it on charge for a few hours before we started using it. So it comes with two brackets which are handy if we want to position our probes in on our grill rack. We're monitoring the temperature in there, so they're really handy. So what I really like about this as well are the probes. We've got four probes here, and as you can see, we've got four different colors, four different colors. And the nice thing as well is that the end of the cables are also the matching colors. So it's very easy to keep track of which cable, which temperature probe is plugged into um, which piece of meat, one, two, three, four, on the monitor there. So let's go ahead and plug these in and turn the unit on and have a look at the temperatures. So these are nice and easy to plug in. Because I've got this rubber seal, you have to push them in fairly firmly. The last one, which is somewhere, somewhere deep inside, something's got a hold on you. I don't know where that sound came from. Okay, so we've got our four probes plugged in. Nice clear display. Press the button for the backlit, 28, 28, 26, 27. They're slowly coming up to the same temperature. We've got degrees C turned on at the moment. We've got our little Wi-Fi signal. I've already connected this one actually. And then our battery indicator as well. It's got a magnetic uh, back on it, which is great. Doesn't work on a brick wall, but you know what I mean. Let's have a look at how this actually works setting up on your phone, because that's the key beauty of it. So let's connect the Inkbird to our phone. So if you take the manual or the bottom of the box, which you've got under here, and you open your camera on your phone, on most phones, and then you can just click on the QR code and it'll take you to the App Store. So we've got the App Store open here. I've actually already downloaded this app, but I would download it. Let's go to Open. And then if it's the first time, you click on Register, Email or your mobile phone number, Password, Password, and then you get a verification code. I've already done that, so I'm gonna go back, and I'm just going to sign in. So let me do that. So the next step is to connect the device. So you can see on the Inkbird here, it's got that Wi-Fi icon flashing, which means it's not currently connected to a phone. Let's click on this one here. Let's click on iBBQ4T, and then go to next step. And it's got here fast flashing, slow flashing, no Wi-Fi icon, and Wi-Fi icon is not flashing. So if we click on fast uh, flashing and next step, and then you get to enter in your Wi-Fi details, which I've already got. Now it's going to be looking for the Wi-Fi. Now it's very important at this point that these devices are close to your household Wi-Fi router. I tried this outside um, behind a couple of brick walls and it didn't connect. So make sure you do this close to, it actually says here, make sure your phone and device are close to the router. So let's see how long this takes. You can see that the Wi-Fi icons actually already stopped flashing on the Inkbird, which means it's, it's already starting to connect. You can see there. All right, congratulations, pairing success, very good. So now we can see our device, and if we click on here, we'll be able to see all of our temperatures, our one, two, three, four temperatures. Cool. So let's go into the settings here, and we can set between 24 and 12 hour. We can mute the alarms there, or mute, turn the mute on, which means no sound, and uh, we can also set degrees Celsius or degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature calibration is a useful feature if you find that one of the temperatures is a little bit off. Um, best to do this in a, in a cup of cold water with all the temperature sensors together or uh, in a cup of hot water, do a bit of both. And then you can see if any of the temperatures are out of whack. But at the moment, you can see they're all pretty close. Um, but you want to check those if you find there's any big variance between the different sensors. And so, for example, if number one was way off, we can then add some temperatures to it here and it'll adjust accordingly. So only play with this if you're really finding that the temperature's out of whack, but again, have them all bundled together in exactly the same position if you're gonna do this. 
So we've got our graph here. So let's click on that. You can see the temperatures one, two, three, four over there. I was just touching that probe so the temperature started to go up. Um, and you can scroll through the time on the chart here, which is good. Now, there's a really nice functionality, which is top right-hand corner. You can export as a CSV file, which is compatible with Excel or any spreadsheet program. So you can download all of your data or you can share the screen, which will take a screenshot and you can email or download your photos um, and share that with somebody else. We have our timer, so we can scroll up and down here and set a 15 minute timer, for example. Let's do that um, and set up. So now we've got a timer running there, it's 14.58 counting down. So if we go into temperature, uh, you can see here we've got beef, we've got the different doneness levels with all the temperatures accordingly, 77, 66, etc. And if we scroll all the way to the right, we've also got barbecue smoke, which is a temperature range, hot smoke, and also cold smoke. So you can set a temperature, it'll uh, sound the alarm if you go outside of this range. And then you can also, as you can see, I've done a couple here to play with, you can make your own custom one. So this custom 120 to 180, if we go down to custom, and we have range, we can adjust the range. So we can say, well, I want it to be 120, or thereabouts, to um, 180. So uh, this is just an example, but obviously you might make a, a 20 degree temperature range. So if it goes outside that range, it's gonna notify you, which may indicate you, know, you need to add pellets or adjust your smoker, whatever it may be. Um, these little dials are a little bit finicky, I find. Um, as you can see, it takes a little bit of kind of getting used to. Um, but once you do get used to it, they're not too bad, but it's very difficult to get exactly the temperature you want. You, you gotta play with it a little bit. There we go, 180. So now if the temperature goes outside of this range, which it is now, the alarm is gonna go off. So if we go back into here, we can then remove this one, and then it's gone. Other functionality, if we go to more, we've just got the device name, so we can change the name of the device. Uh, obviously we can remove the device, and it looks like here we can also share devices with other people as well. Uh, other than that, battery indicator. Now a key feature we wanna look at is turning off the Wi-Fi. So now we're connected to 4G. We wanna see if we are connected, and we are, see we're online. So we are now connected um, to this through our 4G network, which means we can be anywhere in the world on Wi-Fi in another building, and we're connected to our device, and we can set uh, our settings, we can look at our graphs. So this is the key functionality that we really wanna see, is that 4G connectivity. Uh, I've tried this 20 Ks away uh, on a 4G network, on a Wi-Fi network at work, and it was working fine. Other than that, there's no other real functionality that you really wanna play with if you've only got the one device. Uh, this looks like obviously a smart, uh, smart hub that you can add lots of different devices to, but at the moment we have just the one. So far I've found this app really easy to use and the main thing for me is reliability. Uh, it not crashing, the alarms working properly, the graph not clearing and disappearing, which the previous app was doing with the Bluetooth one. If you went out or you changed the setting, the graph would disappear. Um, which is a pain. This seems to be holding that graph regardless of what you do. Uh, I, I haven't run it for 10 hours, although I'll be doing a brisket soon, so I'll be able to run that for a long period of time. Um, but it seems to be working very nicely. Let's have a quick look at the interface live on the phone so you can see it a little bit more clearly. So really, really simple to use. Your graph here is great in that it can record over many, many hours. One, two, three, four probes. Um, ability to export that to CSV as we discussed earlier. Timer, easy to set. Temperature, alarm, easy to set as well. Uh, either the default or the custom value. So this app is just really quite straightforward um, and I've found it very easy to navigate and learn how to use it. As you can see, I'm actually on 4G at the moment, so I'm not connected to my Wi-Fi and it's connected really reliably, no issues at all. So. Um, this is a huge improvement over the, the previous app um, with the Bluetooth devices. So if you've got a Bluetooth one and you're wanting to step up your game in terms of being able to monitor your temperatures of your cooking, I definitely recommend the upgrade. Um, if you want to grab one of these, check out the link in the description below to get a discount on Amazon Australia. Um, and obviously, if you like this content, please give me a thumbs up, um, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell as well. And I'll uh, keep putting out more content. Cheers.